Stroke Camp is really a family reunion because many people come every year. It's just become a time to be with friends. It's almost like the camp experience for um, individuals who've had a stroke and their caregivers. So they come and just relax and enjoy. Well, here we're in the Western North Carolina, so they enjoy the mountains and Lake Junaluska and just have a great time kind of being pampered and taking a break. I'm looking forward to meeting all of these people and learning about their lives. And I've heard this is a very transformational experience for them and their caregivers. We're newlyweds. It was 50 years in April of 2018. <laughs> and before Sue's stroke happened, um, let me just say she was a jock from uh, elementary school on all the way. We used to walk three and a quarter miles every morning uh, around our community, starting at 6.30 in the morning. And when we got back, I would always ask, did I have a good walk? because she was the early bird and I'm the night owl, right? Anyway, she had been having a lot of trouble with atrial fibrillation over a period of about six years and finally decided to have a procedure done that would uh, lessen the risk of a stroke. They always tell you in medical procedures there's a 2% risk or a 5% risk and with this particular procedure they had said the, there is about a 2% risk of something going wrong. Well. Unfortunately, we wound up in that 2%. They say that a heart attack either takes you or leaves you, but a stroke will take parts of you. The parts that are taken is determined by the location of the stroke in the brain and how long the individual goes without medical attention. While the majority of stroke survivors are older adults, everyone is vulnerable to some degree. And oftentimes the difference between an easy recovery and a life of challenges is in the response time. Um, Chris was down. Out of town, I was out of town. And the next thing I did was sit and watch a uh, TV show. Monk was the name of the show. <laughs> and, oh, but I really wasn't sure what it is. And it was really a problem, but it went a little better. And so I went to bed, which is probably the worst I could have done. 9.30. Like the children couldn't wake her up. Philip was, the four youngest were there, and Philip was nine, and he called me and said, we can't wake mom up. For couples like Chris and Carol and Bob and Sue, life changes in an instant, and they're left with the task of establishing a new normal. Stroke camp is oftentimes their only chance to this get away. This is their first camp. Raise your hand for us. Ooh, we got quite a I heard about this. My like within my first month of being in PT school because I was in the MAP Health Clinic and one of the ladies had just been to stroke camp the weekend before and she was telling me all about it and how much she loved it and she's actually gonna be back this time. We've had third year, about five third year DPT students at every camp for the past five years and it's a great opportunity for them to be able to work with stroke survivors as well as their caregivers. We get the 
I guess be ourselves again, you know, and just let go of all the stuff at home, therapy and doctors and stuff like that. You know, you don't have to worry about any of that. The process sends the stroke survivor in one direction and the caregiver in another for breakout sessions. So hearing other people's stories uh, has, has reinforced some things I already knew and then just introduced me to some new ideas as well. I'd like to go away every weekend for the <laughs> same price. But, you know, it's, it's just wonderful. Stroke Camp provides a rich weekend full of games, music, manicures, massages, and free time where campers can pick their own adventure. For the WCU student volunteers, a highlight of the weekend was the pontoon ride, where they had an opportunity to hone their physical therapy skills in a very unique situation. First of all, the water level was really low. So the boat was about a foot lower than the dock, and that poses a really great challenge for students to figure out, okay, how are we gonna get these people who are in wheelchairs onto a boat where we can't get the wheelchair to the seat. So we were like lifting wheelchairs down onto a pontoon boat and doing like a fireman lift, which is basically you've got, you know, all hands on deck to lift this one person out of a chair and put them into another seat. One of the things about being in this program is that the professors are incredible. They really do treat you like you are going to be a professional one day and they give you these opportunities to succeed. To see the students really get together and work as a team and accomplish this goal of getting the patients from the dock and into their seats so that they could enjoy a nice relaxing boat ride was amazing. Sue started talking in earnest about two weeks ago. The neighbors are flabbergasted. Her caregivers in the nursing home are really flabbergasted and there are hugs all around when she'll say a two or three word sentence. So it's just been magic. It's just fun to watch. And it's like a dam broke and, and an obstacle has been overcome. And we are now just enjoying it and working with a speech therapist that we just uh, started with this past week. Even before the stroke, Sue was always just a wonderful, supportive person who was an encourager to other people. And I have tried to impress on her during this whole process that once her voice comes back and once some of her mobility returns, uh, she's going to be an incredible encourager for somebody else who's just starting down this path, who thinks it's the end of the world and then you find that it's not. And there's always hope. So she'll be a wonderful encourager. She's just tremendous at that. Now she can put words to it. And I'd like to uh, ask Sue if she'd like to say anything. Okay, don't mess with it. <laughs> it's good. It'll pick you up. They get a word, if I'm so happy to have my speech back, they will forget. Never give up. I learned. The hard way to send it to, to understand what has happened. Bob, or from the cunning, I look and rather than saying, him like, like, like I loved him, loved him very much and, and I, I, 
I wanted to live to know on a terrible level. Sorry. You realize you haven't talked like that in two years? Yeah. This is a miracle. It's amazing. If you have to go through this, you might as well do it with your best friend. <laughs> Well said. Yes, I know. Can you tell me what you saw before? My legs were coming off the floor And the ghost that holds your tongue in its place Do you dream of all our yesterdays And the times that we were too afraid To really tell each other what we meant When I hear your voice again, I'll be quiet. If I were to go back and see some of those same faces and some of those same people, it would feel like a family that I have missed. I mean, it's hard to put it into words, but if you're really investing your emotion and really investing in people, and giving yourself an opportunity to do that, that means that you're kind of giving a piece of yourself away and accepting a piece from someone else. It's an amazing experience and it's so rewarding. Voice again, I'll be quiet. I'm not allowed to slow down and mourn you. I don't have time to think of all that could be This is a trial, this is a battle I hope you fight in 